Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to be taking a look at what might be the ultimate developer terminal. Now a lot of us work at the command line quite often. Honestly, I don't that much anymore. And that actually makes this a little bit more valuable because I don't have a clue what I'm doing half the time. And this is one of those cases where AI integration is actually a useful thing, especially something they call agent mode. So yep, we're adding AI to absolutely everything these days. But in the case of a terminal, it kind of makes sense. Now the big thing about this, and the reason why I'm talking about Warp today, is previously this used to be be Mac OS only. Since then, they added Linux support, and then now they added Windows support as well. So as you can see by this list of names scrolling by, you got companies like VMware, Google, Nvidia, Netflix, Amazon, etc., all using Warp right now. And the entire idea behind it, again, they do have these integrated AI tools there. It's also, again, a fast uh, command line tool built for, um, you know, again, high speed and so on. So the user experience, quality of life features are built in, auto-complete commands, edit like an IDE, customize your terminal from themes to key bindings. Uh, and then on top of that, again, it is designed to be fast. So this was written in Rust and it uses Metal, OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX, or WGPU for its command line rendering. Speaking of terminals that are supported, it supports the following shells. So Z shell, Bash, Fish, PowerShell, uh, WSL, and Git Bash are all supported. Again, it is now available on Windows as well as Mac and Linux. Uh, and then in terms of AI, a number of different prompts are supported and there are a number of things that you can configure about it as well. And then you got some things about for security, working as a team, collaboration, and so on. So that in a nutshell is Warp, at least the overview of Warp. We're going to actually go ahead and show you it hands-on and then we'll come back to some details like pricing and so on. So you see here, this is Warp. Up here, you can create a different shell if you wish like so so i could create a bash shell or a powershell by default i am using powershell over here you do have uh options over here so commands and so on that you can work with uh various different other settings available here you speaking of settings you can come on up oops that's not what i wanted Okay, we'll keep those open. So let's close that pane. So we do have a split plane going on here now. Uh, but what I actually wanted to do was go to this one right here. And you can see here, you've got a number of different settings available, uh, including uh, theming support. So if you want to change out the theme, you've got a variety of different themes available like this as an example, which is awful. Let's go back to this one. But you do have all those skinning and theming options. As you can see from the way the user interface works as well, uh, it is kind of this slide out, pop out way of doing things. Let's go back to our terminal over here. Again, we do have the split going on. Uh, I can right click and get rid of that split easily enough over here. And now down here, you see your typical terminal. So, and I do not know why I have a face hovering down here. <laughs> I have no clue. Oh, that's my full screen. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let me just go out of full screen because having that face staring at me is strange. All right, so here we are inside of it. Uh, again, I can do control plus to make things bigger. Uh, that I think is the maximum zoom you right, see right there. So you do your typical things. I can do, here's my directory of items. Now let's say I'm working from here and I wanna say, all right, give me all of the files recursively uh, that begin with A. So what I could actually do, if I knew how to do that, so I could do like get uh, items, and you see I've got auto completion for all of the stuff I'm doing, but instead what I could do is hit control I and switch over to agent mode. This is where AI kicks in. By the way, there is a fixed number of requests that you get per month on the free tier, but now I could say um, just in natural typing, list all of the files in all sub directories that start with A, like so. And now AI request, it figures out what it should be doing for this command. It gives you the command itself, and then you can either automatically run it or execute it like so. And there are all of the files in the subdirectory uh, that start with A. So A, 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 uh, A, and so on. So it's the kind of stuff that you've got there. You can see the list of the command and then you get a bit of a breakdown of, uh, you know, the summary of what you did, how things go. Uh, I could start a brand new conversation by doing command shift Y, or, or I can actually have it. Um, sorry, I could command shift Y would be to follow up questions. So if I wanted to do another question, I could do so again, control I to switch out of agent mode and agent mode is actually pretty impressive. So I could do something like, let's go back here. I'm going to say, uh, create a, a folder called Waldo, then change into that directory. So uh, if you do not know how to do this kind of things, it will automatically do it for you. And then here, so it's prompted up, make dir Waldo CD Waldo. I'll go ahead and run that. It is going to go ahead and execute it. 
Uh, failed, failed, user is using PowerShell and does not know the and statement. In Power, I could use the semicolon instead. Would you like me to try? Yes, and let it run. So you can see it, the AI is not perfect, uh, but it resolved it, fixed it itself, and explained everything to you. So this is actually a very good way of actually learning how to use the command prompt. So now you can see I am in Waldo right here. Now, one of the examples it gives, by the way, there is a palette available. So I can do Control, Shift, and P. And it will bring up this. If you've used uh, Visual Studio Code, you've got an idea what this is all about. Various different commands that are available. You can search for commands. So if I want to say go straight to the theme picker, I could run it right from here. That is, again, Control Shift P. It seems like everything has a palette these days. Now I can do something kind of more impressive. Let's say uh, create a snake game in, or oh, sorry, using Python named Waldo.py. And here, it's going to go ahead and create the snake game inside of my current folder. It explains it to you. So then it does a bit of a breakdown of what it's going to do. Uh, so let it execute. And then it's going to, uh, there's the various different pieces of said snake game in action. Uh, and an explanation of how snake game is going to be run. Yes, I just basically created a game entirely using an AI prompt from a terminal. Uh, and then, it, but it does take uh, a, a bit of time, so it's not an immediate thing. But here it goes. There is our defined game, so I can uh, I can navigate through it. By the way, I can use my mouse cursor to go ahead and do so. So I want to go ahead and commit that. Press Enter. So now it created a game called. Oh, so there, I am in. I do not want it to explain what I'm doing. So I'm going to exit out of agent mode. So I'm back into normal mode. And I'll do a list. And there you see waldo.py. Now let's say I want to go ahead and open up waldo.py, uh, but I want to use Visual Studio Code, which by the way, would be the command code waldo.py. And you do have tab completion like so. But what I could do again, go back to agent mode and say, uh, open up the file waldo.py. Uh, using Visual Studio Code. And now it's gonna try and figure out how to do so. And it says, okay, here's the command. It's gonna say, would you like to go ahead and run this command? And I'll go ahead and say, yes. And boom, there is our Python game that this thing created. Uh, I have no idea if it actually worked, but it looks solid. Uh, so there you could see the kind of capabilities of the warp terminal. So uh, if you work with, like again, I don't use PowerShell that often, so it's nice to have um, this guidance for me. Uh, you do only get 100 requests a month, it says. Uh, and so you see sign up for more AI requests. Although right now, if you do download the Windows version, they are saying uh, 200 requests for free. So that is the tool. And if you don't have that many questions, you might be able to get by with 200 requests, 200 AI requests. Um, if you're using it mostly just as a fast, speedy terminal with an IDE like editing workflow, it could be a good pickup in that regard. Otherwise, what you're looking at for pricing is here. So the free tier, uh, again, it is saying up to uh, 100 requests per month, 250 accepted next command suggestions, uh, LLM models of choice, blah, 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 blah. And then if you want more, you are looking at $15 per user per month build annually or $18 build monthly. And that gets you up to 1,000 requests. Uh, and then or team, $22 gets you up to unlimited for every team member. Uh, so that is the Warp pricing. Again, Warp did just um, become available on Windows, which is why I am covering it right now. Uh, it also is available on Windows ARM 64, which is actually kind of cool. And once again, the bonus, so if you use Warp on Windows before March 26, 2025, you get two times the AI credits for all oh, first month only. That's a bummer. So I don't know if that credit, the AI credit thing is something you will go through too fast to make the... Um, the free version that useful or not. I'm not actually sure, but it should give you enough to actually go ahead and check it out and see if this is for you. I gotta admit, um, in my experience with it, it's actually been a pretty solid experience. It just as an IDE to start with, um, it is fast, nice, reflective things. So if you just, if you stay completely out of AI mode, and I just come in here out of agent mode and just use it as a terminal, it's a solid terminal. It works quite well. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you do have all the agent mode AI stuff there uh, to do things that, you know, sometimes, uh, let me go back here, directory, uh, cd dot dot, uh, recursively delete all files in the folder Waldo, including the folder. 
So let's see how it does here. This one also here, you're kind of like, how do I do this again? And there's how you do it, by the way. So there, it removed them all. Now let's see if it's smart enough to remember to remove it after. Ah, now this is getting annoying. So it's saying, oh no, I'm doing, so the first thing it gave us was a terminal request. And then it's like, oh crap, no, nah, no, nah, this is PowerShell. And then it gives us the PowerShell version of that. I think that's something they definitely, we've had that twice in this particular video. That's one of those things where we're going to want to have uh, at the future, uh, where it just goes straight to PowerShell with the recommendation and not giving us uh, the other ones instead. So there we go. Waldo is deleted. Uh, that is how the terminal and AI integration works. Everything is explained to you, uh, even though it seems to be really failing on this particular example. But hey, it would not be a YouTube demo if I did not show a failure state. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is Warp. Uh, again, it may be the ultimate developer terminal out there uh, if you are working with one of the supported shells. And the supported shells, are they're pretty common ones. Again, like Bash, PowerShell, uh, the Windows Shell, uh, Fish, Git Bash, and so on. So decent number of platform support. Let me know what you think of Warp. Have you used it? Are you going to check it out? Let me know in the comments below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.